In today's video, I'm going to show you how to digitize outline portrait designs. Inner Circle in the classroom, you can download the included files. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can check out ELS in the description. Let's get started. The first step is to import our design. Now I've already created an image for the portrait. So I'm going to click on the backdrop and I'm going to click load backdrop. As you can see here, I have a portrait example. These are super popular all over Etsy and custom shops, even home and hobby shops. And even if you want to just do this for gifts, these are super, super easy to make. And it brings on that beautiful customized embroidery to life. So the next thing that I'm going to do is click on my backdrop once again, and I'm going to click select backdrop. This is so that I can select my image. And then when I right click, I can select properties. Under those properties, I can see my width and my height. And currently it's a little bit too big. Now, if you see inches or if you see millimeters and you want to see inches, you can press M on your keyboard to switch between, or you can press up here where it says toggle metric to Imperial. Now for me, I know that I want this image to be four inches in height. So I'm just going to press four on my keyboard and press enter to resize that image. And I think this is pretty good for me. For this tutorial, we are going to use two tools and that is going to be the steel tool and the run tool. And that on your keyboard is number one for run and number six for steel. Now we are going to make some changes to the steel and that is going to be its width. Currently it's at 2.5 millimeters, but at the size of this image, I think I want the steel to be one millimeter and we are going to leave it at the classic recipe, which is currently cotton. That's all we're going to do. Remember one for run six for steel and one millimeter. Now I am going to change the color maybe to a green. So it's easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to go back to my backdrop one more time so that I can drop down its opacity and make it even easier for you guys to see what's going on as I'm digitizing. As always, my goal with digitizing is to connect the whole design to avoid as many trims as possible. That way we can finish these kinds of designs out even faster and you can give it to your customers or to your friends and family. I'm going to press six so that I make sure that my steel is enabled. And once I've selected my steel, I'm going to left click to put my first point. As you can see, I've left clicked and now it's kind of hovering around, letting me put the next point. Now, if you left click, you will create straight points. And if you right click, you will create curved points. So here, because this is hair, I'm, I'm going to right click next. And you can see that I'm kind of doing a bit of a curve. So I'm going to press right click again to make the next curve. Right click one more time to make the next one. Right click to keep putting those curve points. And here, because I've reached an end, I'm just going to click left click and I'm going to press enter on my keyboard. Now, if I enable my 3D view right here, I can see that this is the one millimeter stitch that we've created. It was super fast. The next step is to find another shape to connect it to the one that we just created. Now, because we have Smart Joan enabled, it is going to take care of the start and the stop automatically for us. So for example, if we wanted to do his hair, I can start over here. So I'm going to press left click to put my first point down, and then I'm going to press right click to start creating those curved points. As you can see, I'm pressing right click all the way around this way. I'm just going around here, right clicking. Now here, because we have a curve, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press right click right at the lowest point and then right click once again to curve it all the way up until we finished around here where the fingers are at. So I'm going to press enter. And on this design, there is only one trim. And if you don't know what trims are, it's the scissors. Basically, that's when your machine will choose to trim and potentially jump or change color. And it was here before. But because, again, we have Smart Join, I'm going to press Q on my keyboard so I can see the start and stop. And if you can't see that, all you have to do is click on the three dots at the top left and make sure you go to view entry and exit that as soon as that's enabled, as well as view commands, you should be able to see both scissors as well as the start and stop. Remember how this shape, I started it here on the left and then I went down here to the right. In reality, this shape should have jumped all the way from here to here and make a thread. But the software detected that this shape should start over here create all of these stitches and then over here where the trim 
or the scissors are at now. It's a super neat tool that saves a lot of time. Next, let's press six once again and keep creating more shapes. Now here I could either create this one here on the left or I can create this one on the right. But I think I kind of want to take care of these shapes over here. And by the way, I'm just holding spacebar to pan and I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Very, very simple. So let's go over here. I'm going to press left click to put my first point down, then right click, right click, right click, and then just right click a couple of times to create those curves. And then the last one, I'm going to press left click. Perfect. That looks awesome. Once again, you can see there's only one zisser, which means that there's only one trim so far in this design. So let's do this. I'm just going to create this deck shape right here. I'm going to press left click then right click to start curving the shape. And then I'm going to finish right here and press left click. Perfect. Now we could create the hand next, but we do have another shape that is connecting it. So let's take care of this one instead. That way we don't have to make any manual connections on this design. So I'm going to press left click on this one and then right click to create a curve, go all the way down here and then press enter like so. Can we take care of the hand? Let's go for it. So I'm going to press left click all the way at the bottom here, then left click because I'm creating a straight shape. And then I can press right click to go all the way around. Now here, I think I'm just going to stop here. So I press left click and I'm just going to overlap the shape a little bit like so. So the next one, what I'll do is I'll press left click and then left and then I'm going to do right and just overlap ever so slightly. So instead of creating two steel shapes that are gonna go right beside each other, that that's just gonna be a little too much. I'm just overlapping this one and then just creating one shape. Again, I'm gonna start from the bottom, then do a left click so I can create a straight point and then curve it only at the top. And then again, I'm going to overlap it somewhere around over here and then left click, left click once again and right click to create that point. Now here I am going to kind, let me just delete that for a second. I'm going to curve it to create that curve. Perfect. And then let's curve this one as well. And we can finish where can we finish all the way down there. Perfect. And you can see we have a pretty nice and smooth head without having too many stitches on that whole shape. Next, we can either go down here and take care of this whole arm, but I think I'm going to work on the face next. So I'm going to press left click and then just right click to create all of these nice uh, smooth surfaces right here. Perfect. I like that. Now here I do have two shapes and here I only have one, which means that I think it's best to create this one right here. Let's take care of that. So I'm going to press left click to put my first point and then right click to make the curve of that jaw. Make sure I follow it. Nice and good. That's awesome. And then let's do left click once again and finish right there. We do have a couple of more shapes to take care of. We have this one down here. We have this over here. So let's try and take care of all of these tiny ones over here. I am going to start by creating this one on this side and just go all the way around to the end. And then I'm going to create this one. So left click and then right click. What you can see, I kind of cornered myself because from here, I mean, I've already created a stitch over here. So where could I really go? What do I do? We have two options and this is where the run tool comes in. So I'm just going to control Z to undo or you can press undo on the top here. The traditional way to connect this is now I'm going to press one to switch to my run tool and I'm going to press left click using the run tool, then right. And I'm going to make a connection in the middle of this shape. So you can see that I'm now creating a run stitch as opposed to a zigzag. And now I can press six for my steel tool, press left click and then left click again, just to make that shape. And you can see that there is now a connection where now we can finish this shape like so. That is a slightly more advanced version of digitizing when you start manually adding connections, but it does give you some really nice results and it doesn't limit you to where you can go. 
So for example, let's try that one more time. Let's say I want to create the shape over here on this side where this arm meets, and then I want to finish this shape on this side or even that one over there. I'm going to press one to bring up my run tool and I'm going to create a connection. Think of it like a subway. This right now is a little train that is going between this under underground. So this little connection, you won't really see it when you embroider because we're putting the zigzag on top of it afterwards. Now I'm going to press six to go back to my steel tool and I'm going to do a left click and then right just to follow this path along. So I'm thinking of this almost like the roof of the subway or this is the highway above it. So now it is above ground. And you can see we still have that connection. There is still only one trim in this whole design, but I still have this other shape that I wanna take care of. Now, because it's a smart join, we don't have to change the stop manually. All I'm going to do is press one on my brush. So let's switch back to run and I'm going to press left click on this little subway line once again, the connection that we did before, and I'm going to return all the way here. Why? Because next I want to create the shape right here. So I'm going to press six to bring up my steel tool and I'm going to press left click all the way from the top. Let's do right clicking to create those nice smooth surfaces and press left click to finish that shape right there. Now we have the subway system happening somewhere over here. So let's take care of that. And again, because of smart join, I can just start from this and because the scissors are over here and I'm going to go all the way around by right clicking all the way to the end here and I can press enter. Still only one trim because if we go into this shape that we just created, instead of the start going over here and then there was a trim, the smart join decided to put the start where the closest last shape was and then it finished over here where we last set our shape saving us lots of time. I know I sound like a broken record guys, but I cannot emphasize enough how awesome this tool is. And then we have two more shapes and we have the rectangle. So the same thing applies. We're going to make a connection because the rectangle is gonna go on top, taking care of that subway system or that connection underneath. Let's press one to activate our run tool. And I'm just going to do one straight line from here to here making sure that we are connecting. And now I'm going to press six to bring up my steel tool and create this one shape right here. Now I'm going to press one to go back to my run tool and make a connection all the way from here to the other side, press enter. And the last thing is just to press six one more time to create the connection one more time from here all the way to the end. And there we go. You can see that we have created this whole portrait without needing to trim, without having to jump all over the place. All of it is connected and you will see that right away as soon as we showcase the embroidery, but we still have the rectangle to make. So on our widget tool, we are going to switch from our fast draw input into a shape and I'm just gonna choose a rectangle. Now with the rectangle selected, maybe let's change it to three millimeters. I think that'd be pretty good. And I'm going to click and drag from one side to the other to create that rectangle. I'm going to let go so that it creates that rectangle. But we need to make it into rectangle because it currently is a square. <laughs> so I'm going to press A on my keyboard or select, which is up here on our tools, and I'm going to select it. Now up here, we have a couple of points, these purple points that allows us to stretch it or resize it or rotate it. And all I'm gonna do is while selecting the top one, I'm going to stretch it like that. And the bottom one, I'm going to stretch it down to turn that into a really nice rectangle. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's see, something like that is pretty good. Not too much, but that's perfect. I like that a lot. Now you'll notice that there are two trims. So let's take care of those because we don't wanna be trimming. We've already done all the hard work and the rectangle should be the easiest part. So pressing Q on your keyboard, you can choose the path edit or you can go up here where it says shape edit and enable path edit. Let's select the rectangle first and you can see we have the star down here 
and the stop over here. Let's switch the start to about this end over here. And then let's select this one, which is the last shape which we created. And I'm going to bring the stop to this end over here. Mm, should I change the start? Uh, maybe I'll change it over here as well. And now you can see that instead of having two trims, there's only one left. So now this is pretty much done. If you wanted to, we can select it by clicking select all up here or control A, and we can change that to black. We can change it to red. We can change it to purple, to whatever color you want to embroider this on. And the other thing we have left to do is to see this date down here. So 12, 23, 22. What we're going to do for that is just create a text. So on your text tool up here, or you can press T to bring in a text. Here we go. Here we have so many fonts to choose from, but for now we have to do the date. So let's do 12 slash 23 slash 22. And then we're going to right click to enter. Perfect. And the beautiful thing about the fonts is that it tells you the minimal height that you can have for each font. So for example, this one block RG is telling you that five millimeters is the minimum. So let's bring this down to five. I'm just going to press five right here and then press enter. Let's bring this over here. And that's a little too small. So how about we make it seven millimeters? Uh, that's actually really nice. I do really like that. So now that we've got that, here we go. We have the date and we have the portrait. Now let's hide the image. So by clicking view backdrop, you can hide the image. I can hide the commands too, because I don't want to see all of these trims, which I do want because when I'm uh, stitching out the dates, I just wanted to look super clear. So let's just hide the commands for now. And I'm going to click shift R on my keyboard or up here besides millimeter slash inches, you can click view redraw. Let's press play and see what happens. You can see that's the first stitch that we've created. Then the second one automatically connecting the third one and so on, creating the hand. And instead of having two steel stitches overlapping each other, we just have one and it's going to look super clean. Next, we have the jaw, we have the dress, and you can see right away that's where the first connection happens. So instead of jumping or trimming, it just connects to the next shape, creates that a stitch. And then here we go. Once again, we made that connection to create that uh, sleeve. Then it goes back to the hair and then it creates the shoulder part connecting once again to the bottom part and then connecting to the other shoulder, creating the whole border, which looks awesome. And then last but not least, creating the text. Oh man, this is awesome. And so far it's only 6,200 stitches. If we press M on our keyboard, we can see the height and that is 3.7 inches, which is perfect because that's usually how you embroider it on a chess piece. Now we have one more thing to do and that is to embroider this design. So let's go take care of that. And that's the end result of the test ready to go in a sweater. Remember guys to always do a test before you embroider it on your final project just in case there are any mishaps and that way you can always improve on your files. So what do you think of this style? Inner Circle members, don't forget to download your lesson files below. Not a member yet? Join the Inner Circle and get access to exclusive bonuses, hands-on training and everything you need to master embroidery digitizing. Click the link in the description to get started. Want to keep learning? Check out these tutorials next and take your embroidery skills even further.